Are you guys ready? Let's do this. Oh, that was, oh, that was too much. I got to bring it down a notch so I can last 30 minutes. You have found us. Today, we're talking about transitioning or rocking virtual selling, and we're going to do it in the light of this nutty, nutty economy. I want to give a special shout out. Suzanne tells me we've got friends joining us from logistics and insurance today, and many of you are missing face-to-face -face interaction. I understand this, right? We are much harder to ignore when we're in front of somebody, and it's a hell of a lot harder to get a hold of people on the phone. But in addition to that, we're battling price cuts and we're battling people calling us back. And it's really hard to build our value in a crazy economy if nobody's going to talk to us. And that's what our focus is here today. So welcome one and all. I promise you're going to walk away with at least five tips that you can use. All right. If you haven't been with us before, uh, that you found a sales shot. We do this every single month. There are 30 minutes typically. Every once in a while, we do a double shot. Uh, here are the next three. Feel free to jump out and register now. This is an awesome thing to bring the whole team to. I recommend you book 30 minutes right afterwards so you can talk about how to apply it because you know I'm a training nerd and what we're doing here today isn't training. It is inspiration. It's great ideas. It's edutainment. But if you want to get serious about building these skills, then call Suzanne or Ted on my team and come on in and let the team at Factor 8 help you. Um, we're kind of excited because the bar is now open for everyone. That's the name of our platform, the sales bar. So we work with teams now from five to 5,000. It used to be only 50 and above. Here's where we play. And if you're leaning in, then I applaud you because now is the time to sharpen the saw. In economies like this, this is where the salespeople get separated from the order takers. Even if you've made cuts, let's make sure the rest of the team is on point and sharpening those skills. Here we go. Sales shot number one today. It's hard to swallow, folks, but virtual selling is different than field, right? Can somebody give me a shout out in chat? Which one of these do you find you struggle with most in virtual selling? Because Folks, it's easy to get ghosted, and I am getting ghosted at double the rate lately in this economy. Anybody else? We get a lot less time with folks, don't we? We might get a four-minute call, not a 45-minute presentation. Woo, one, 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 one. <laughs> You're feeling me too, right? It's tough, five and ones, five. This reminds me of the Friends episode. I don't have time to act it out, but if you know it, I'm laughing with you right now. All right, we did a survey last year at Factor 8. Um, and guess what? 70% of the respondents not only said virtual selling was harder, but are struggling with three or more challenges. <sighs> Look, it takes more calls. It takes more effort. And with this economy, it's more important than ever. Here's specifically what people have been struggling with, right? Prospecting, hands down the hardest. Even if you typically are working with set accounts, even if you've been selling to people for 20 years, <laughs> I know they're ghosting you right now. I know they're beating you up on price right now. You may need to start doing some prospecting to continue to meet that number. And that's tough. Hands down, the hardest part of this in prospecting, like wasn't even worth showing a pie chart because it's 99% of the folks, finding the decision maker and getting a hold of them. So tough. And that's why we're focusing here today. Here is how we do it at Factor 8. It's the Billy Bean approach. Anybody know this guy? Heard of him? Heard of the movie? Wait, this is going to help, ladies. <laughs> know it now, right? Moneyball was a movie with Brad Pitt a couple of years ago. And it talked about how this Billy Bean man won the pennant, not by getting the big names, but by finding small unknown players statistically better at getting on first base. Well, why the hell do you care about that? You know why, folks? You can't get home if you can't get on first base. Not a baseball fan, this will help. You can't get home if you can't get on first base. What I'm talking about in first base is getting a hold of people. You can't close, you can't overcome, you can't prove your value if you can't get them on the damn phone. At fact rate, about 10 of our 50 classes are devoted to getting on first base. And it's our secret sauce to helping people build confidence and get wins sooner. So here's what I'm talking about. Your typical sales process, right? You're going to meet, you're going to present, you're going to close after you follow up. Here is an inside sales process, but here is it really, right? 87 voicemails in between. <sighs> that means, folks, the most important thing you can do is get great at voicemail. You'll leave 20 a day. Most will be read. Nobody else is leaving them. How many voicemails do you actually get 
And how many do you get returned? Recent stats say about 95% aren't returned. But guess what? If you are getting a call back, you're on first base, baby. Which means not leaving a voicemail is like buying a billboard and just leaving a blank. It's 100% wasted effort. Marketing experts tell us it takes between eight and 18, that used to be six, touches to get a purchase. No voicemail, no touch. Does that make sense? Don't waste the effort. Leave a voicemail. Just don't leave a crappy one like everybody else does. The truth is, here's more reasons to do it. Voicemail has four goals. Number one, of course, get a call back. But look at these other ones. You're leaving a touch. It's a positive impression of your company. It's a positive impression of you. And let's be clear, there's a little guilt. This is how the game is played. Now, if you're new to virtual sales, this hurts, right? Because you can sell them to Bob for 20 years and now he's ghosting you. Sorry, the game is you get to leave Bob 20 messages. And when Bob finally calls you back or accidentally picks up the phone, you get to pretend that you're not pissed off that he ghosted you 19 other times. And Bob gets to pretend it's perfectly natural that he ignored you. If you're not putting in the effort, you will not get the call. It's totally normal. Even me who loves talking to salespeople, I make them work for it. I, you could better leave me at least five messages before I call you back, okay? And when I do, I do feel a little guilty and I give them more time. Now, how do you actually get that call back? I can't show you scripts. We don't have time today. You can take the class in the sales bar, but these are the four that we find most effective. Lever, mystery, urgency, or value. Couple quick tips. Never, ever, ever sell in a voicemail. Keep it under 10 seconds. Be upbeat and expect the call back. Use one of these strategies in under 10 seconds. Leave as many as it takes to get the call back and you will. You can get up to three calls back in a day. So when we come on site with classes of, of training, we'll go out and start leaving these new voice messages. And by the end of that single day of training, even with just a couple breaks for live calls, they're getting three returned calls. For some of us, that would literally double or triple our, what is that, at bats? No, on base. Triple our on base, okay? That's a conversation and that's first base. All right, next topic we're gonna talk about here. It's a new sales process, right? So that means we got to plan ahead and break our goals, our sales goals down into itty bitty call goals, right? It might take eight steps now. And guess what? The average length of a really successful sales call that isn't pre-scheduled to do discovery or a demo under about four minutes, four minutes. Don't go trying to boil the ocean. Break it down into teeny tiny goal and it looks like this. What's the one thing I need to learn? What's the one thing I want them to know about me? And what commitment do I want to close? So this is a bonus. It's a class we have called Getting Deals Moving. And it talks about the fact that when you can get a customer commitment, get them to say yes to something, get them to take a tiny action item at the end of that call, they remember you. They might not actually do it but they're going to think about the fact they didn't get it done. You're going to have a little more guilt the next time you call. You're going to stand out from the 27 other people cold calling them right now because I know competition is tough. If you can accomplish those three things on a call and then bridge to your next call, you are winning. I'm going to try to get to bridging at the end of this. But if you're coming into the sales bar, have Suzanne queue up these classes for you, call goals and getting deals moving. All right, this next one's going to seem kind of obvious, but you're going to get some good tips out of this. Sales shot number five. Thank you, sir. May I have another? Keep calling, folks. Less than 20% of your calls will connect on the first try. And let's be honest, in the last three months, I think that's cut in half. That means one out of 10, you actually get them. So keep dialing. If you're making 20 or 30 calls a day, you're not going to get a hold of enough people to hit quota. It takes eight to 12 attempts to connect with somebody. That's how many tries it takes. But get this lead. This is from Exant. Over 30% of leads are never contacted at all. You might have called, 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 never left a voicemail. You may as well have not gotten the lead. That's losing money. The most important stat here, though, is 
82% of buyers actually do admit to buying something based on a series of cold calls. You're not wasting your time, folks, right? If you can get to them and you can get to them first, ooh, you have a chance to win. Look at this. I just want you to show what a difference it's going to make if you keep calling. Only about 3% of sales reps will try six or more times. Go play the game. It is it is something within your control right now in today's economy. Triple the number of calls you're making a day, quadruple the number of times you're trying every single contact. Listen, even if Bob's been buying for 20 years, even if they called you to get a quote, call every other day and keep calling until you connect. Leave a voicemail every time. This next strategy is, <laughs> it drives me crazy. When I see people grab their lead list or their account list and be like, who are you calling today? Well, I'm gonna start with the A's and work my way down. Let's get strategic instead, okay? Let's call our prospect leads and our accounts by their sales qualification. Sales qualification is not their marketing hotness score. It's their what's my commission score, all right? It's your estimate of how much or how much more you can sell this account. And we teach you to do it based on two or three things anybody in that company could tell you because you know the decision maker is the hardest one to get a hold of. But if you can get somebody in sales or service or accounts receivable or IT to pick up a phone call and answer these questions for you, now you'll know whether it's an A, B, C, or D. And that tells you how often to call. So here's what it looks like. An A is the most opportunity, right? These are the people who are going to buy the most or the closest to my ICP, ideal customer profile. Bs are missing a little part of it. Cs are low value. Ds are dead. Stop calling. Remember, it's about what they can buy not what they're willing to buy from you. They hate you, but they're a huge opportunity. They're still an A. What does your A look like? What could you ask any live body? Well, I sell sales training to individuals. So my A looks like you have a bunch of sales reps, right? Now there's 20 other things that I could say, but that's the, that's the down and dirty of it, right? If you're selling cleaning supplies, it's about square footage. If you're selling GPS tracking, it's about the number of trucks, okay? Sure, you wanna know budget, but that's not something any live body could answer. If you can get in there and find out the potential, would you be willing to give it eight calls for an A? Heck yeah. I'll tell you what, when we teach this, it just shifts. People start attacking their leads. Call times and dials triple because I know it's worth my time to leave this guy 27 voicemails. Keep calling the A's. Now, when should you call? Here's what research says. The best days to get a hold of people are Wednesdays and Thursdays. So put huge call blocks there, shove your meetings to the other days. Morning and afternoons are best, before and after work are best for your top executives. Boom, here we go. Now, if they actually answer the phone, don't mess it up right? Nine out of 10 people blow it. We're so excited. They picked up. We just puke our value prop all over them. We, you know, it's, it's quota breath. That's awful, right? Suzanne, what do you call that? Pitch slapping people, right? A great introduction is not your value prop. A great introduction is not about earning the right or showing your value. It is about one thing only, getting them to stop reading their email and start talking to you. The goal of a great intro is to get them talking. You got to answer these three questions first. Who are you? What do you want? And why should they give a damn? Okay. Introductions, not the time to start selling. Like I said, it is not your value prop. What you want to be instead is swift. Now, if you've been with Factor 8 for a minute or two, we talk about swift a lot, don't we? Can anybody chat it in for me? What does it stand for? Swift. S-W-I-I-F-T. Anyone? So what's up for them? Swift intros grab attention and they keep contacts on the phone. Awesome, right? Remember, they're typing. They're not listening. They're not listening. They picked up the phone by accident. You're going to perk their ear with a swift intro. And then you know what you're going to do? You're going to ask them a closed question. Why? Because that gets them talking. So come to our next masterclass. I think swift intros is in that. In fact, we have a prospecting 
like super accelerated one day class coming up too. We're going to dive in and help you build this. It takes a few rounds to get it right. And when you do, you're going to be shocked. You're keeping these folks on the phone with you. All of your calls will be four minutes and longer. Now, next tip. We're up to our sixth shot. Anybody feeling woozy? <laughs> I am. But that might be the amount of Claritin that's in my system. Here's the shot. It's a hard one to swallow. They don't care about you and they don't care about their quota. Even if it is your old pal, even if it is your very best customer and your very top account, absolutely positively none of them want their bases touched. Don't touch anything. If you're not calling with something that's going to add value to me in my crazy world, don't bother calling. I don't want you to call and introduce yourself as my new account rep. I don't want you to check in. I do not want you to touch my base. So it's important to know what business people care about. These are the Swift Six, baby. Time, money, ease, reputation or looking good, power or control, and mitigation of risk. There's a bonus number seven there, and it's a lever. And a lever is somebody that you know that I know that makes me credible and gets me to listen for a second. To be honest, a lever is really just about mitigating risk, but it works so well, it's worth pulling out. Now, your job is to make your intro, your voicemail, your value prop, your closing statements, your overcoming objections, always focus on the value to the customer. So what does your product or service bring? Which of these does it relate to? This is how you translate a feature into a benefit. The benefit means so what's in it for them, okay? You can probably translate your value add into all of these six. You never know which one's most important to the customer, of course, until you dig in and get to know them. Here's a quick tip, folks. In this crazy economy, 100% of the time, you need to focus on one and six. Don't talk to me about long-term ROI. Save me money now. What else do I care about? Help me protect my company. Help me protect my employees. Help, help me protect my kids during this R-word economy. Don't sell the long-term vision. Sell what pain you can save. That's what gets people attention in an economy. And know that normally you can talk about the ROI being gained in a quarter or two and how long-term it's going to save so much time and it's going to make their lives easier. But right now, people don't give a damn about that. When you're in an uncertain economy, I need to save money as fast as I can and I need to protect me and the people I know and love from the risk. Find a way to key into those. Here's the good news about spending work on discovering value. Blank. Chat it in for me. It's a percentage between one and 100. Blank percent of the time, buyers will choose sellers who were the first to add value. Hi, Adolfo. How you been? 85. Yep. Anybody else? Come on. Majority Sydney. It's a number. Don't cop out on me. What percentage of the time? 90, 66, 82, 65, 75. Thanks for opening that chat and grabbing your keyboards, everybody. This is fun. Listen, this is good news. It's not as high as you guys thought it was, though. 53% of the time. Over half the time. There's two big things here. The adding of value and, of course, being first, which is why we talk about call, 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 call. If everybody else is going to give up and you get a hold of them and you're focused on Swift, so what's in it for them? 53% of the time you're going to win. I take those odds. I take those odds. Here are more value add reasons to touch. Now, I know that sounds a little creepy, doesn't it? Instead of calling to touch base, instead of calling to check in, here are excuses to call your customers. You know you need to right now. We got to talk to everybody. It's not just about closing what's in the pipeline. It's about protecting the base right now. We've got to get a hold of everybody. This can be an excuse. And then the conversation is talking about what's going on in your business, right? What's happening? Are you guys cutting costs? Where are the risks? How can we help? But these can help get people's attention. All right. Next, I'm going to teach you how to build a bridge. We are cruising, aren't we? I'm going to quick check my questions since we have a second. 
we will be able to see the podcast again. Joseph, did you forget to take notes? I'm just teasing. Of course, Amy's going to send out the recording to everybody. And like I said, in the sales bar now, you can get access to these classes for less than a night at the bar, which is really exciting. Now, call bridging is so important when you're virtual. You remember how we talked about when you're face to face, you've got their attention. Let's say you've got an hour meeting. Well, you got the 10 minutes you walk in. You've got an hour focused presentation. You got the 10 minutes when you're walking out. Even if that's cut in half, it's 10 times the time you get in virtual, right? So when you're calling with somebody, if you have them on the phone, don't let them hang up until you build a bridge to your next call. Critical. Always schedule it. When possible, send the calendar invitation with the dial-in information, folks. Don't just say, I'm going to call you Tuesday and have nothing in there. I open it up. I can't tell you how often that happens. I agree to take a sales call. There's something on my calendar. There's literally nothing in there to join the meeting. In my opinion, at that stage, they don't deserve the time and effort. I'm going to use that time to actually answer my email. Um, give your cell phone number to get theirs. And at the very least, if this is a super cold call and it's not scheduled and they're not going to take a meeting with you, give yourself permission to call back. Let me show you what it might look like. Come on, Mr. Slide. Hey, I know you've got a room run. Let's finish this next week. Is Tuesday afternoon open? One o'clock or two o'clock? You're forcing them to look at their calendar and pick a time for you. All right, I'm going to send a calendar invite to block our time. Is this the best email to send it to? Now, listen, let me give you my cell phone in case something comes up in the meantime. I'm just going to shove it into chat here right now, or here it is live. Great. What's yours? About eight out of 10 times reciprocity works. Give it to get it. If they're not comfortable sharing it with you, what's the worst that's going to happen? They say, oh, no, 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 I don't share that information. No problem. Listen, you've got mine. If you can't make Tuesday, please give me a call. Is that okay? Will you do that? Do you notice I asked the question, will you? instead of just please give me a call. That's an example of that commitment. Will you give me a call if you can't make it? What are they gonna say? 10 out of 10 times, yes. Even if they're not going to, they're gonna say yes. And when somebody commits to doing something, they do it more often. When they say yes, right, they're gonna do it. And if they don't do it, they feel kind of guilty about it. And I bet they're gonna take your next call. Is this making sense, guys? This is building a call bridge. Don't hang up until you get the next appointment. If this were a cold call, it's our chance to say, okay, listen, I get it. You've got to run. Can we talk next week? Oh, I'm too busy, right? They're shutting you down. Great. Well, I'm going to give you a call on Tuesday. Is this the best number? Just keep trying. This is the persistence. Remember what I said at the beginning? Now is the time where you're separating the sellers from the order takers. Get after it. This is exciting. All right, cool. Folks, I did it. 25 minutes and we're there. I want to tell you what I promised you at the beginning. There are master classes coming up. Prospecting, discovery, and that swift accelerated workshop. This is going to be cool. What we do here is we use the sales bar and live cohort training. So in the sales bar, you'll find interactive e-learning, videos, real recorded calls, script samples, cheat sheets, everything you need to really build and start practicing these skills, including tools for managers to help coach it, activities to keep it alive, things to do in your huddle, et cetera. So join one of these master classes. We do certificates even at the end. You can save 200 bucks, MC underscore 200. There it is, MC underscore 200. And I have to also do a plug. You guys, some of you know me from Girls Club or you've seen that online. Girls Club is where we help women in sales Take the jump into management. It's a six-month intensive certification program. 70% of our participants are promoted before it's even over. If you think now is not the time to develop yourself, you've got it exactly backwards. Now is the time. Our next cohort is in April. Because of the crazy economy, I've opened up 10 free seats. They're on a first-come, first-served basis. You need to go apply at wearegirlsclub.com forward slash apply. I've got a couple minutes for questions, everybody. Here's my information. Let's connect on LinkedIn if we're not already. And I'm opening up the chat to see what questions you have. If you need to run, awesome. You've got five minutes to go to the bathroom or make three calls and leave a couple voicemails before your next meeting. Otherwise, I'm going to stay here and take a couple questions. And I hope to see you next month at our sales shot.